All right, let's talk about Spotlight 2.0 uh, and then get into Snapshot 3D. So Spotlight 2.0 is going to have a few new features, so we're going to kind of do a little rehash of the basics. Now, in order to use Spotlight, let's go ahead and hit comma key to get rid of the light box here. In order to use Spotlight, we need something on our screen here. So let's go ahead and we'll grab a Sphere 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, go ahead and make it a poly mesh 3D. And now we have something on our screen here. In order to turn Spotlight on, uh, an easy way to do that is go into your texture here. And if you want to select a texture, like if we grab this uh, Pixel Logic image right down here, uh, with the texture selected, you can go in here, you can hit the plus sign, and that, when you roll over that, you're going to see that little plus minus little thing right here. That is Add to Spotlight. So if you turn that on with a texture selected, it will turn on Spotlight, and that texture will be available to you. First things first, if you select a texture and you just click on it, you're going to see it's going to move that gizmo around. So Spotlight has been activated, it is turned on, and you're in gizmo mode of Spotlight. What does that mean? Spotlight has three modes, on, off, and let's say paintable. Uh, essentially what it means is you're in gizmo mode now, that means Spotlight is on. If you hit Z, as in ZBrush, you're going to see the gizmo disappears, but the Spotlight image is still here. So at this point, what you can do, we have the standard brush select, we have ZAD turned on. So if we like sculpt through this object, it's actually using Spotlight to help deform this geometry behind it. Using it is kind of like a masking system. If we want to see what we're doing, we need to turn Spotlight off, and that is Shift-Z. So if we do Shift-Z, that turns Spotlight off, and now you can see what we're doing. Now, generally speaking, I don't use Spotlight the model, so I'm going to hit Control-D to undo that. I'm going to hit Z to turn Spotlight back on, and there's two things we can do here. Either we can make this image smaller, and by doing that, we can go up here to the scale, and you see where that gizmo scales from is where we selected the object. So if we want to, we can take this little orange ring and we can move that wherever we want to. So we can move it up here to this corner, we can scale from this corner. Um, however, if we scale this image down and we move it all over here, you're gonna see if I click around with this image selected and I'm clicking around that little orange thing right here in between, uh, I'm able to move the whole entire image. So this scale down and over here, you're gonna see there's these little snap points. We have a snap point here, here, here in the corner. Essentially, we have a bounding box for this image, and right along the midpoints for this image, we have little snapping points. So if I want to scale it exactly from the middle, you can just click, and uh, you can move that gizmo, and you can scale right from here. Now, not only do you have snapping points on your image here, if you actually move the gizmo over to your object, you're going to see, as I roll this gizmo over this object, you're going to see I have snapping points on the object itself. It's taking the bounding box of our object here and giving us midpoints and endpoints to that object. So what we can do, as we can say snap the gizmo to here, so we can go ahead and scale it in and out. And then as I move this around, I can snap that middle gizmo to the middle of the sphere, or the top or the side or the corner, doesn't really matter, but we'll go ahead and snap it to the middle of the sphere here. And now let's say I want to paint this color information onto my sphere. So I'm going to hit Z to go into painting mode. I'm going to change my standard brush to RGB. I'm going to turn off Z add. Uh, we can tap S and we can make our draw size smaller. And now we can paint that color information right onto our sphere behind it. Now to get rid of the Spotlight, we can do Shift-Z, that'll turn it off, and now you can see we've painted that color information. Now, there's not a whole lot of vertex information. Essentially, that's what we're doing is we're poly painting, which is painting vertex information. If we want to have a little bit more resolution here, we can hit Control-D, and that's going to subdivide our object under geometry. You can hit Divide a couple times. So now when I do Shift-Z, we can go ahead and position our sphere behind this again, and then now when we paint, and we can just paint right across here, it doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and paint all this here, and we do Shift-Z, you're going to see we were painting uh, that logo right onto that vertex information here. So we'll go ahead and do that. So that's the basics of Spotlight here. So Shift-Z to turn it on, Z to go into gizmo mode, Z to go into painting mode, and then Shift-Z to turn it off. So Z, Z, toggle, toggle, and then Shift-Z to turn it off, and then Z to turn it back on. Now let's talk about some of these talk about some of these easy options up here. Uh, the first one's rotate. If you hold down shift, that'll snap the little incremental uh, sections here. This one is scale, which we've already talked about. Pin spotlight and spotlight radius is when you're painting on the uh, spotlight. This opacity here will lower down uh, the opacity of this. It doesn't affect the uh, paint color. So if you do Z and then we go through and we paint again, uh, it's still going to paint fully. If you want to drop the uh, the amount of color going through, you're going to want to do fade. But opacity just controls it so uh, you can actually see through the um, spotlight a little bit better. But now let's say, okay, we got one image in here. What if we want to bring in uh, multiple images? Uh, one way to do that is if you have spotlight open, if you go in here to your texture menu, you can select another texture in here or you can import one. So with spotlight turned on and you import another texture, I'm just going to go to my desktop here and we'll grab this JPEG that I made. You're going to see it automatically adds it to spotlight. However, if say spotlight is off, you do shift Z. 
So spotlight's off here and you grab a new texture. You can at any time import or grab a new texture and with that texture selected, hit add to spotlight. And now you have multiple textures added to spotlight. So when you click on them, you can uh, manipulate them. If you click off of them, it's gonna manipulate all of them at once. So you can click on, you can make these things bigger or smaller. If you want to resize all of these at once, you can do a little bit of organization. You can go over here and you can say tile proportional. One important thing to note is when we get into Spotlight 3D, uh, the 3D creation tool, I'm sorry, Snapshot 3D, the uh, 3D creation tool with Spotlight, there's really no point in bringing in any image bigger than 512. This one right down here is a 512 image. The rest of these look like they're 1024, but if you want to make them all the same, you can say unified, uh, tile unified, then they'll all be the same. So here we have tile proportional, tile selected, tile unified. Now let's say you've brought in a bunch of textures you like to use, and you want to go ahead and save these out. You can go in here to texture, you can save a spotlight, you can load a spotlight, and in here you can see you have a light box spotlight. Uh, you can access that through that menu, or you can just hit the comma key. Uh, by default, it'll probably be on project. You can go down here to spotlight, and you, have, you can see there's a spotlight saved in here. If you want to save to these locations, just tap one, and you can see where you need to save it. Program files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2019, Z spotlights, and then just save your spotlight uh, right in there. So now, if I double click this first one here, that's gonna load that spotlight set. If I wanna move all of them, remember I can tap off of them, and then I can move all these at once. And again, you can use these organizational ones however you want, so you can tile them all unified, and if you select one, and then you tile selected, that'll go ahead and make the big, the selected one bigger, and then the rest of them smaller. Now, if you wanna see them a little bit better, you can, again, you can go through here and you can change their uh, opacity.